Let's design some brand new Pokemon. Bug types are some of the most common Pokemon in any given game. So let's make some bug type Pokemon today to set the tone for a hypothetical new region. I've designed starters and water types to name a few, so check those out with the link below. But today, we're going to focus on five Pokemon that share the bug typing, and are some of the essential Aerovian Pokemon. So first of all, we have to understand the role that bug types play in a Pokemon region. Like I said, these are some of the first Pokemon that you'll find, so they can really work to explain the region's climate, landscape, or culture. So we're going to design two lines today that will be distinct from one another but share a common theme. Abundance. The region that we're designing these for is based on California, a place that's known for an abundance of natural resources, both in terms of natural landscapes and agriculture. This works well since bugs in real life play important roles in shaping agriculture or nature, so what if we made two evolution lines that have a sort of rivalry with one another? One will be a pollinator, and the other will be a pest? Let's get into it. The first line will be the early stage bug type family, like Butterfree or Beedrill. Like I said, we're going to make this one a pollinator, meaning an animal that carries pollen on its legs and wings as it travels between different plants, thus increasing that plant's population in the wild. So we'll have to base this Pokemon on a obvious pick, the honeybee. These are animals found all over the world that have a very obvious relationship with human beings due to their roles as pollinators, and also producers of honey. So what if we made a tiny bee Pokemon that works as a friendly addition to the region? That gives us honey, a corruption of the word honey with the word bee in there as well. Honey are excellent pollinators, and they're responsible for the distribution of pollen all across the Arova region, resulting in gorgeous blooming fields all throughout the year. Natural teammates, honey have a natural work ethic, and they'll work amongst themselves in the thousands, communicating in abstract messages through their black horns. Due to their natural role on team environments, they're popular catches for new Aerovian trainers. So honey are based on honeybees, bumblebees, as well as two more unusual types of bees found in California specifically. The California Carpenter Bee, which is where I got the idea for honey's resilient work ethic, as well as the black and brown markings on its face, which I think balance nicely with its yellow body. I also incorporated small horns to make honey look like the Eucerini family of bees, all of which have these long horns or antenna. These types of bees also live in California as well sometimes. Plus, these horns will play a larger role in its evolutions, due to their function as communication devices. Overall, honey are friendly bug type Pokemon that live in massive swarms, and they're partially responsible for the great condition of Varova's farms and flower fields. This is where they'd live, obviously in the early roots of Varova in equivalence to the Central Valley, Sacramento, Napa Valley, and even further south towards LA, making them one of the most common and iconic representatives of Varova that we've met so far. But of course, at the early level of 9, honey does quickly evolve into a cocoon form, just like most other early bug types. This gives us pupot, from pupa, a word for a cocoon, and pot, for its resemblance to a honeypot shape. The hardest working of honey will be relieved from its tireless labor and seclude itself in woodland trees, where it will build a wax-like casing to protect its body as it prepares to evolve again. Due to the extreme concentration required to evolve, pupot are notoriously grouchy, using its horns to signal a swarm of honey to attack whoever might have disturbed its nest. They secrete a sticky black substance within their body that are a popular snack. So designing pupot was a bit of a challenge, because bees don't really go through a distinct metamorphosis like a lot of other insects, so I wanted to avoid a cocoon for an animal that might feel forced. However, I think I found a creative workaround by basing pupot not only on actual cocoons, but honeycomb beehives and conventional designs for man-made pots of honey as well. So pupot would create these resilient structures for themselves and make nests in trees where they await their final evolution. I think seeing pupot nests would be a common sight in forests across Arova, where other Pokemon and humans would sometimes try and go for their honey, which would be a delicacy in Arova. Despite their grumpy and reclusive nature, pupot are still kind Pokemon at heart. They just assume this demeanor to save their energy for its final evolution, which would have the biggest role in helping Pokemon and people across the Arova region. And there's not all too much else to say about these middle stages of the honey line. So let's move on to the final evolution, Pixine from Pixie and Queen. Pixine are the benevolent leaders of entire colonies of honey, leading them throughout the region and blessing humans with fertile fields that blossom with colorful flowers. 
Pixian are experts at crafting a honey-like substance which they weave into net-like patterns between their horns. This mysterious nectar supposedly gives them the ability to read the auras of all who it comes into contact with. And humans who eat the honey often fall into long euphoric trances. So honey are inspired by queen bees, which are the leaders of any given bee colony in real life. Which is a social process that I find fascinating. I wanted to translate that idea into a Pokemon that would explain the effective teamwork of honey swarms. Pixine would command these Pokemon across the entire region to gather nectar from different flowers, pollinating all of Arova in the process. This would cause humans to celebrate the arrival of honey and Pixine, which are typically gentle creatures. With this nectar, groups of honey and even single Pixine could turn it into their signature honey substance, which Pixine strings between its two long horns to amplify all of its messages, and also receive advanced information on the emotions of different living organisms. This makes it a natural leader, and it gives it that fairy typing. It's also loosely based on the idea of a Native American dream catcher, which I think is a cool tie-in as well. So that's the entire Honey line, the early root bug Pokemon that represents the positive side of natural abundance in Arova. Now let's meet the flip side of that idea and design a Pokemon based on more sinister ideas of greed, destruction, or warfare. How would a Bug-type Pokemon respond to a region with plenty of natural resources and use those for itself? Well, the answer lies in real life, where bugs can be considered pests to human development if they destroy livestock or crops. I was interested in the idea of weevils, which are weird-looking bugs with distinct snouts using those mouthpieces to chew tunnels through different fields and grain silos in the search for a place to lay eggs or find food to survive. So what if we made a weevil Pokemon that would be considered an unwelcome blight in the Arova region, due to its tendency to destroy crops? So all of that gives us Weenox, from Weevil and Noxious, which means to stink unpleasantly. Very resilient Pokemon, Weenox venture across Arova's plains, fields, forests, and swamps using their long snouts to turn over bramble and find rotten fruit to consume. They metabolize these noxious gases into their round shells. Despite their timid demeanor and removal of dead waste, they're considered to be one of the biggest pests in Arova, due to the harm that massive Weenox platoons cause when chewing through crop fields, decimating entire farms. So Weenox are inspired by not only different types of grain weevils, but also brown marmorated stink bugs. These are brown, round, shelled bugs that live in California, and they can produce a defensive scent. All of that works to give Weenox its poison typing and show how it often ruins fields, searching for anything to eat and turn that into its defensive stink chemical. This is where they'd live. They'd be found in early upper roots of Arova, just like their counterpart Honey, but they're also found in harsher environments, like Arova's Volcano Route and, and its equivalent to the Sierra Nevada Badlands due to their harsher ways of survival. Basically, they aren't found anywhere nice in the region, for obvious reasons. Pay attention to the fact that Weenox perform their behavior in large platoons, which alludes to the military motif that I wanted to emphasize in this line, in comparison to Honey's more naturalistic design. That's why Weenox's shell kind of looks like an army helmet, with its color palette inspired by camouflage uniform colors. With that in mind, let's move on to Weenox's evolution, Entonox from entomology, the study of insects, and noxious once again. Entonox are violent territorial bug Pokemon that command platoons of Weenox and they spar often. In their shells, they can release literal stink bombs that can make Pokemon even five times their size faint. To protect themselves from their own noxious gases, their foraging snouts have developed special filter-like glands that act as respirators. Their frail antenna can retreat into their shells when needed, but they're usually kept elongated to transmit and receive messages. So there's the evolved form of Weenox, once again inspired by both weevils and stink bugs, and also army soldiers, with a distinct focus on the idea of chemical warfare. That's why I incorporated a gas mask-like design into its snout, which I think translates pretty naturally from a weevil face, as well as the idea of using potent stenches on its enemies that it can filter out. That would make Entonox pretty dangerous and aggressive Pokemon that are rarely found in the wild of Verova. But those that do manage to evolve and exist are enemies of many Pokemon and human society at large, because of their very destructive methods that they use to combat and survive, which they can use to wipe out entire acres of farmland at any time. Luckily, Entonox control is pretty good, and these Pokemon would be relegated to remote areas of the region, keeping Arova a generally beautiful and abundant place. 
Overall though, I hope I struck a balance between a more beneficial natural design for an evolution line that would help preserve the Arova region's natural landscape, as well as one inspired by a more malevolent artificial design that would work in the opposite way. This all goes to reinforce the Arova region's themes of balance, as well as produce appealing Pokemon designs. Which Pokemon groups, types, or concepts do you want to see next? I'm continuing to create new designs in future videos to flesh out the entire Arova region's Pokedex, and I definitely couldn't do it without ideas and collaboration from all of you. Of course, check out other Arova region-centric videos in the Pokemon Carbon and Silicon playlist below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for more content.